Alright guys, welcome to Red's Resort. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Origin 100 series. We're going to compare all the variants and see some of their strengths and weaknesses and do a little tour slash review along the way. Before we do that, I'd like to say a quick thank you to my channel members, Nils Gerdes, Spacecraft and Thomas in London. Thank you so much for your support, it truly is an honour to have you guys. If you know someone looking to get into Star Citizen, please use one of the referral codes on screen now when signing up for some extra starting credits. If you'd like to become a member yourself, you can find the button below or the Patreon link in the description. Ok, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Famously flight tested and then abandoned, Origin scrapped the original 100 series design due to concerns that it didn't fully embody luxury. The 200 and 300 series took precedent, and work on the 100 series stagnated for decades. That is until the early 2940s, when the company developed the state-of-the-art adaptive intake refinery fuel system. Air significantly reduced thruster emissions and could extract and convert a wide variety of gases into usable plasma to reduce the need to refuel. When early simulations showed that the lighter ships would benefit the most from air, CEO Jennifer Friskers dusted off the 100 series schematics. For years, she had wanted to expand the Origin lineup to include a new entry level ship to hook consumers into the brand but knew it would need a distinguishing feature. Air was it. Designers integrated the revolutionary new system into the old chassis, and leveraged decades spent refining the Origin style to ensure the 100 series looked, felt and flew like a luxury craft. The variants available in the game are the 100i, the 125a and the 135c. Let's get down to the hangar and review some ships. This is the 100i and we'll treat this as the default version. I will point out any differences between the variants as we go, so unless I highlight a feature specifically, you should be safe to assume it's the same as this version. The 100i is one of those ships that, to me at least, would have been an awesome ship to start the game with. If your primary interest was just to go as fast as you can, blow a lot of things up and look absolutely incredible whilst doing it, then you've found what you were looking for. There's not much discernible difference between the shape and the size of the variants. They are built with this low, sleek body, and with all these wings and fins, you definitely get a strong aquatic vibe from its design, like it's based off some sort of very fast sailboat, which wouldn't be out of the ordinary for the Origin lineup. It's a strange thing to say, but I like this ship's face. And it's even got a little mouth here as well. This is where the radar system will eventually be placed at some point. As we come around for a side profile, we get a really good look at the default skin. The skins for all variants are actually really nice, and I was a little critical of some of the default skins on the 300 series, but this black and white is just lovely, as always. It's basically a big part of the brand at this point, and rightly so. I've yet to see the Origin ships fail to pull off this iconic black and white. The cockpit seems to be an elongated bubble, which is fine I guess, but the long straight back I feel is missing something. Not sure what though, a spine of some sort, something to accent the flow of the ship. If we come back in closer we have another external component access point. This is a QT drive access here, and there's another one of these fins here which will likely become flight control surfaces in the future for an atmosphere flight. Underneath this section, there's some doors under here for deploying the missiles. This fires two size 2 missiles, and that's the same for the 135C. The 125A has six in total, and all these mounts are size locked, so you can't change them out. You can change the missile type, you can't change the size. We have the door here, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Here we have a beautifully designed retro thruster along the wing here, and if we come in close, this must also double as an intake for the air system, which is the adaptive intake refinery. This basically allows the ship to absorb gas for fuel, and these ones are particularly efficient when set against how much fuel the ship burns. However, they aren't the only ships in the game with this technology, and in terms of pure fuel efficiency, the 100 series isn't the best to be honest, which is weird, but it may get a balance at some point. The Titan is a little bit better, and the Pisces is a lot better. But it definitely could save your ass if you're ever in a pinch, so not complaining. All three variants have this air system by the way, with the exact same efficiency and the exact same fuel tank sizes as well. Under the wing here, we find a nice weapons package. There are two size 3 hardpoints, 
one on each wing, and these can be manual gimbal during combat, although that will slow your rate of fire. And again, this is the same on all three variants. They all have two size 3 guns. If we keep going, there's more thruster ports and stuff on the side here. If we come underneath at the back, there's a little hatch that exposes the cooling system. And there's one of these on each wing. Everything neat and tidy in its little place. And that just leaves us with the rear of the ship. Very nice shapes here, really nice to look at, especially if you prefer flying in third person sometimes. Very stylish and modern horizontal thruster. This section here, all the way through to the back of the cabin, is basically empty unfortunately. And since there's no real storage cupboards on any of the three versions, it would be really nice if CIG were to give us an access hatch here for storing some small goods in I think. In the 135C this whole area opens up for the cargo storage, so I feel like in this version there should be something available. The right side of the ship is just the same as the left, so let's head inside. The door is probably the best door in the game, to be honest. Very similar to the 300 series door, I think it opens in the opposite direction, but it still has the nice, chunky, but precise feel to it. And this one's even better, because instead of ladders, you get these cool unfolding steps. The sounds are amazing. And the flush closing definitely tickles my man brain a bit more than it reasonably should. Coming inside, we are treated to a pretty spartan interior cabin, to be honest. I mean, I like the nice white trimming and the blue light running down there. Pretty nice cockpit chair, but I feel for Origin, it's very functional, very grey. I still like the way it flows up to the front, and watching this door close from the inside is a treat as well. Over here we have some component access. No complaints about the animations, all very cool stuff. Inside I think that's the power plant and that's the shield generator. So that gives us a size 1 power plant, a size 1 shield generator, two size 1 coolers and a size 1 quantum drive. Again, that's the same for all versions. Underneath that, if we open this panel here, we have a little cargo area that can hold two SCU of cargo. And all the variants have this. The 135C has a rear hatch that allows it to hold 6 in total. It means there's actually a decent bit of space to play with in the cabin area overall. You could easily get quite a few people in here. There's a couple of screens here which don't do anything. And this bed. Again, I mean a bed is a bed, but for a ship touted as luxury, it's a bit lacking if I'm being honest. I've always loved this ship, but now I'm being forced to really break it down. It would be good if this version had some better slant towards touring. Maybe leaned into the luxury a bit more in some way. I am usually the biggest fan of a bed in a ship, it's just there's nothing about the 100i that makes it unique over the other variants. Even a larger fuel tank would make a difference. I mean there's plenty of space back there in the back. Still, a bed's a bed, can't grumble really. Then we move up here to the cockpit. Everything up here is pretty polished and smooth looking. Nice layout to everything, seems to be a mixture of physical and holographic displays. There's four in total, two are off to the side which isn't great as it means turning and looking away, but two is usually enough for most combat situations. The buttons and dials match the cockpit aesthetic well enough, and we have a yoke steering wheel, which is again, nothing overly impressive but certainly fitting for the design language. In terms of the cockpit view, it's actually really amazing. Once you're in here, and the chair has lifted you up a bit, you can get quite a bit more than half the hemisphere, pretty clear all round view, and definitely can see down to the left and right for easier landing and stuff. Let's fire her up and see how she sounds. Origin jump marks at your service. Core system operational. Engines active. Sounds pretty smooth. Very refined even. Taking off, we can get a look at the landing gear animation. The description for the 100i reads, the Origin 100i is a luxury starter ship that is the base variant of the 100 series. It features Origin Jumpworks patented air fuel system, making it the most efficient and eco-friendly ship on the market. It is capable of long distance flights compared to most ships of its size. About that, actually, this is average flight endurance times. And just, no. On fuel efficiency, it's pretty good though. Only getting beat by the core, Titan, 
and the pace is variant. Basically, it's pretty efficient, but its fuel capacity isn't as big as we'd like. And as far as luxury and touring are concerned, well, the 125 and the 135 have essentially identical interiors. So, its primary selling point is that it's the cheapest version, both in-game and out. It is the only way to get this white paint scheme through, and it is hard to knock it because it can do so many different jobs in the verse. A massive variety of basic tasks including running bunkers, deliveries, bounties, retrieval ops, all those investigation missions and pretty much anything you can find in the mission tab that doesn't require specialist equipment. Obviously you're not going to be doing much mining or salvaging, but you'll still be picking up rare cargo you find whilst taking out bounties etc to help you pad out your earnings. A really decent and pretty cheap daily driver if ever I've seen one. Just a bit redundant compared to its other variants. And this is the 125A. Now obviously there's not a lot of changes to go over here. The size and shape are pretty much identical. But you will notice that we now have a default grey with what looks like cream tan hints here and there. With a white logo across the back end. This white panel is a bug and shouldn't be white at all. It looks okay I guess, nothing mind blowing, I mean cream white and grey is a bit underwhelming but the ship pulls it off I think. Also there's a little air intake on the roof in this version which is a nice little touch. We still have the two size threes under the wings that can be manually gimbaled if you choose. The only real difference with this version is that the missile payload has changed. We still have the deployable two missiles in the front bay but if we come round the back you can kind of glitch through here and see the other four missiles in the back bay. Again, all size locked. Inside, everything is the exact same as before. We have the same space for components and cargo and a bed as well. Everything in the cockpit is the same as well. The description for the 125A reads, The 125A is a light fighter and starter ship that is the combat variant of the 100 series. With the air fuel system, a souped up weapons package, and all the luxury and refinement you've come to expect from Origin Jumpworks, the 125A has been designed for the discerning Maverick. As things stand, this is actually a really great combat ship. Obviously, the four extra missiles isn't going to be too much of an advantage over the other variants, given the state missiles can be in from patch to patch. But this version has traditionally been the fastest version as well, and the most manoeuvrable. This has yet to be rebalanced after master modes, so keep a close eye on the pinned comments to see how that pans out. Essentially, everything the 100i can do, this ship will do as well, which is practically everything. It's just now you have a slightly better weapons package at your disposal. It might seem inconsequential, and to a degree it pretty much is, but it all adds up. If you can keep on target just a little longer and soften them up with an extra missile, then your average time out hunting bounties is objectively increased. Overall, I'd say get some good guns on it and maybe slap a different skin on it from the store if you feel like it and you've got yourself the perfect little combat starter ship for menacing the bounties of the verse. Last up is the 135C. This is a light freight variant of the group. First off, we can see this version has been graced by this really lovely blue and red skin. I like this one a lot actually, at least it's a bit different, not a colour you see very often in the game. We've lost the scoop off the spine of the ship again for this version, we have the two size 2 missile bay in the front and the one size 3 hardpoint on each wing. The only main difference with the 135 is round the back. This opens up the back cargo bay where we can store 4 SCU of cargo. Pretty cool I think, I had no idea before I made this that this was even a thing. Add to that the two inside, that gives us six in total. Now, they say it's for cargo, but you could totally fit people in here. There's even a button on the inside for letting yourselves out. And on top of that, I'm pretty certain that you could tractor beam the new Mirai Pulse in here. I couldn't get my hands on it to test that. Someone managed to get one in the cargo box on the Mustang. So, technically should be possible. In fact, I'm guessing if you really wanted to, you could probably stick one in the cabin section somehow as well, but I'd need somebody to verify. Apart from that, there's no other differences. Everything inside is the same layout as before, no design changes at all. Even the standard components across all three models are all grade C, 
so no benefits there either. Personally, this is one of the few ships where it feels like they've had to force a separation between the variants. We could have got a few extra missiles stuck on the 135 somewhere pretty easily, I'd imagine, making it an all-in-one awesome addition. Six cargo, six missiles and a bed. But it is what it is. The description for the 135 reads, The Origin 135C is a light freight and starter ship that is a cargo variant of the 100 series. The ship has a specific cargo module integrated into the rear of the ship to accommodate the additional capacity along with Origin's patented air fuel system. What would you use this version for? Well, basically, it gives you options. Everything the other two versions do, but a little bit more space for some extra whether that's suits of armour, looted cargo, drugs or dead bodies, it definitely opens up any playstyle you choose to undertake for a little more profit. And after spending a little time with this ship, I've got to say, it's looking like my new favourite of the bunch. Ok, this one was a little tricky. Obviously, it's got the speed. Flat out, they all hit near 1400 metres a second and 260 in SCM. The problem I found is with strafe. Now this is the first one of these I've done since Master Mose came in and the flight model changed, so I'm guessing it's probably related to that. Pitch, yaw and roll are fine, but when you're low flying or running canyons and the like, the response speed of strafe controls is really bad, mostly the up and down strafe. I found if there was a ridge ahead, the up strafe was so slow I started turning sideways and using side strafe because it was slightly faster. Anyway, I'm guessing all the ships will be showing a bit of this behaviour now, and it will be something that will take some time to adjust to. This effect was lessened in space compared to atmosphere I noticed however, which makes me think travelling at Mach 4 in Atmo and quickly dodging approaching objects might be two incompatible concepts. Obviously, in atmosphere, you have the usual dampening of the yaw controls as well, as the ship tries to maintain its aerodynamic path through the air. Overall though, obviously you'd have to be pretty locked into your racing career to even bother about any of this, because they are very minor stuff. It's still a very manoeuvrable and fast ship, and without a doubt an absolute joy to fly. And the amount of time you have under boost is incredible. However, there's a downside to that. The boost also recharges pretty slowly as well, I died quite a few times because normal strafing wasn't enough and my boost was still in the red. Definitely something to keep an eye on. It's also quite big as well, and I was always clipping something with those wings. I did still have a lot of fun though, that speed and acceleration is pretty addictive. Low flying is still very very good. You can definitely do some racing with this thing, but if the up down strafe issue persists, you might have to relearn how to fly. To be honest, I didn't spend as much time as I'd have liked on this, as right now ships seem to blow up a lot compared to other builds of the game, and things got a bit tedious to say the least, especially on the racetracks. As I mentioned earlier, all three ships have pretty much identical speeds. There will be balancing done in the coming patches, hopefully this will put them back into the same pecking order they were in before. I'm guessing but I'd assume this will land as the 125A being the fastest and most manoeuvrable, followed by the 100I and then the 135C. But definitely check the pinned comments below as there should be a lot of balancing done in 3.24 and I'll update the stats as we go. Ok, so let's not mess around here. You may have noticed recently that combat in the game is vastly different from before. Enemies aren't taking prisoners, Everyone's speed is reduced, the time to kill has gone up, and it's pretty easy to get your ass handed to you as you make your way further and further up the rankings. This ship, however, any variant, was ridiculously good in combat. I feel like I had a lightsaber, and they were handcuffed zombies with no legs. Obviously, because there's a lot of dealing with groups of enemies, you still need to be very careful and be ready to switch between targets depending on their position relative to you but my god this thing was like a scalpel. That endless boost meant that I could keep pretty much everything on my nose while staying off of theirs. Two size threes were just ripping things up, but it is just two size threes and that's the problem. 
as you start getting into the high risk and very high risk, the time on target starts to take a very long time, upping the risk to you and reducing the efficiency and profitability. It's still very much doable, but by high risk you might want to start looking at maybe putting a couple of Deadbolt 3s on there and just focusing on the primary bounty target. But that means you will see runs where you're empty after just one fight. So if you're chaining them, it's up to you if you think that's the most efficient way to do things over laser cannons. Personally, I think it is. You come in, you hit them with all your missiles, then the dead bolts that mostly pass through their shields, then resupply. That will in all likelihood take you less time than using your laser cannons right now. But it will cost you for the missiles, so, you know. I need to run the numbers on that, but lasers were taking quite some time. Also, I probably don't need to say this, but extreme risk, while probably doable, eventually would be a total waste of your time. You will be a mere annoyance to that 890 jump, and if any of its supporting ships catch you lacking, you're in for a bad day. Good if you like a challenge, bad if you like money. For stealth, because that's apparently a thing now in the game, we come in a little bit higher IR and cross-section than a Hornet Ghost, so we're pretty stealthy. Nothing worth trying to utilise to any sort of degree though. If you're firing those missiles off, you're best doing it from as close range as you're allowed, because the ships with active turrets are very hard to land missiles on these days. For armour, stats were all stuck on the same between the variants, so check the pinned and I'll let you know when that changes. For PvP, we're currently looking at an A tier PvP ship. It's fast and well armed, but will run into trouble against groups and turrets. And that's really good to see, because before it was generally regarded as a decent luxury runaround, but not much else. Now it can really bring some spice to the table. And there's only a couple of ships out there that can even think of taking it on. The 300s, the Avengers, the Sabres are good, the Razors, the Buccaneer are all really competitive. Most other ships in a like for like fight will struggle, all things being equal. So, in summary then. They are quick and competent and have some small luxuries like a bed and some cargo space. They can handle the majority of jobs the game can throw at them and they're very enjoyable to fly around. If I had to choose one variant that I feel would be the most all round, I'd have to go with the 135C. The missing four missiles on the 125, at this point at least, just doesn't equate to all that extra storage space that can be filled with all that looted goodness. And being able to take a small bike along when doing bunkers and the like it's just the icing on the cake. I mean, you could probably fit that bike in the cabin behind the pilot as well, to be honest. But I'm going to draw the line there, as we're definitely getting into possible lethal territory. And that would definitely cause access issues, unless it maybe fits in the storage bit in the cabin. Someone let us know below so we can settle it. So following that would be the 100i in second, and then the 125a. Now if your primary focus is going to be straight bounties, and you don't care about looting at all, then obviously the extra missile should be your choice. And remember, you'd be getting that extra little bit of speed as well, so in the end could be worth it. There are a few other ships that are around that price point that might be worth considering. The Anvil CAX and CAR are around half a million. They don't have anywhere near the combat capability and don't have a bed, but the CAR does have respawn capability. The Mustangs, the Auroras and the Cutters are all around the six. 700,000 mark as well. Some of them, especially the cutter, would be definitely worth considering, but again, none of them come close for combat. The next step up would be the Titan, 300i, 315p and the Nomad, all between 1.3 and 1.5 million, and they are really well equipped ships, and they are all cheaper than the 125a, believe it or not, so definitely something worth considering. If I had to score them out of 10 solely based on versatility and price to performance, I'd go 7 for the 135, 6 for the 100, and 6 for the 125A. It's actually a hard ship to compete with for its current combat prowess without going a little more expensive. For a loadout, it's all military grade A for that extra robustness in combat, and for a QT drive, it's got to be that Atlas. Again, a lot of the things in this video might change. But if you have any suggestions or you see anything you think is wrong and would like to point it out, please don't hesitate, as I will highlight it and make sure people who read the pinned comments know about it. 
I do make mistakes pretty regularly, to be honest, but the game is so big and the community has such varied specialities within the game that there's always a helpful citizen willing to keep things on track, which I'll always appreciate. And that's it folks, that's your 100 series comparison and review to the best of my humble knowledge. If you liked this, please consider subscribing and leaving a like, and hopefully I'll see you again sometime. 07 guys.